Marie Claire Malaysia is 21 years old this year. And we're kicking it off right with 30 of the best and brightest in Malaysia. Our guest of honour today is Shamani Dashni. And if you don't know Shamani, Shamani just come into Amnesty International Malaysia as Executive Director. Um, and she will be talking about our everyday rights as women, um, all our civil liberties, because we're all entitled to civil liberties. We're 21 years old this year. Marie Claire is a very special magazine because we're not just um, a fashion magazine. Uh, so in as much as we are very chic and we, we love our beauty and our fashion, we're also very concerned about women's issues and women's rights. You will notice that our features are always at the front of the book. Before we proceed, I'd like to thank Bonia, Bonia Watches for sponsoring us um, and kick-starting our series for this year. Uh, Bonia has been incredibly supportive. Let me just introduce you uh, once more to Shamani Dashni, Executive Director of Amnesty International, who's here to talk about our civil liberties, our rights as women. It's a rather broad topic. I mean, as it is, you know, this side of the table was very passionate about getting stopped by cops, you know, and then you're going on. And this side of the table was also equally vocal. So it's, it's a broad spectrum and I'm not hoping for real, any, I mean, we, we do have solutions. I just hope that we keep talking about this, not just within these four walls, but also to your friends, your family, and keep them aware, keep them educated so that they too will start talking. So stories are very important. Um, here we're already relating stories, there I see people relating stories, stories are very important, it helps people to be aware. Uh, I think there was one, um, there was a comment coming from Sarah about what can we, this is sassy, about what can we do and how can we change things. Sometimes things seem too large to change and yet they're not. I think in small ways we can all participate, whether it's wake up for a good cause, whether it's you know um, in your in your business uh, incorporating it in your business uh, or the way you conduct business or the way you talk to your team you know to get them to be more educated and more aware uh, more importantly we have a tool today that facilitates change and that is social media on facebook on twitter on instagram i think the more people hashtag the more people talk the more people get mobilized together. I'm the director of Amnesty International Malaysia. I've been in the role for a year and a half. Not very long, but I'll tell you a little bit about why I got into it. Like Loshini mentioned just now, we used to work together in NSD. We were in different desks. I was with news, she was with features. And um, what the exposure in, in that seven years, and during that seven years, I met the elder, Ivy. <laughs> and interviewed her a couple of times as well. And I must say that it's because of people I met during my NST days, I'd be included, um, and a couple of other people who were activists in the circle. Um, it got me thinking, because you write about all these issues that irritate you and anger you, and I spent quite a few years writing about health rights and writing about HIV and AIDS and writing about transgender issues. And that kind of sparked um, me wanting to do more. One of the things that drew me into this job is because you, it gave me an opportunity to make change, even if it's a small one. And I know I'm speaking, with, speaking for peers and with peers here. Um, the, one, of, one of the most important things is within um, the civil society movement, it's not about having your human rights activists and your civil rights activists out there talking. It's also about getting everybody else talking. The, all these campaigns about hashtags and using hashtags and, and spreading that message, that is so important. Sometimes you don't see the, the effect of what you're doing, but trust. So the thing is, it doesn't take a, a 10,000 people to make a difference, you know, sometimes it's just one. And that's the message I, want, I wanted to get across to you. If you have a cause that 
you're interested in, if you have a cause that you're passionate about, if you have a cause that you don't know what it's about, but you want to find out about it, please get involved. I think that is the, the, the easiest thing I can, I can, I can suggest. I about starting those debates. And right now, that culture is stifling those debates. It's stifling those, your, your and, yours and mine, our, our rights to be able to say what we want to say and to say it fearlessly. It's, it's becoming worse. How you counter that is to start those debates. Even if it's like a book club or something like that, it's okay. We shouldn't judge. But at the same time, I think, you know, even from a female to another female, if you hear a story like, oh, what about this, this, this? And if you thought everything through and you know what the consequences are and you can accept them, then yes, go ahead and do it. I think the main problem these days is that, yes, yeah, social media is very empowering. But a lot of the times people forget there's also a certain responsibility that comes with being empowered. You know, and there are consequences. And if you're going to troll on the internet, yes, Instagram, fantastic, but people say nasty things to each other, female to female. They're not supporting each other. So again, you're not thinking of the whys. What we need to do is change this attitude and structures that allows for men to have those privileges. So the rights are there, but people don't know about the rights. That's why it's important to pass the word around to say the policeman is not doing his duty. You know, yeah. she needs to know you know, what you need to tell a woman who's going through a bad relationship, abusive relationship, which can be most of us in this room even, you know, we've allowed, we've been patient with our men, is never to say to them, it's your fault. He made that decision, he made that choice to be abusive. You don't, it's not your fault. It's really important to tell women it's not your fault. But you know what? There's a way out. And some women may not want to take that path, but you just have to be patient. Because how many of us are told over and over again, we are nothing without a husband. We are nothing without a boyfriend. Mm. And that somehow you're a lesser being because you're single, because you're celibate, because you're a lesbian. So all of this, all of this contributes yeah, to yeah. this thing. So it's not only about the law, but it's also the, our own attitudinal change. I'm not saying your, mm. our attitudinal change in show, ensuring that women are not being judged all the time. Mm. And some, if women stay in bad relationships, do not judge them. Yeah. Because just plant that seed and know it takes a long time because don't forget, as you said, she loves him. And that's a very empowering feeling. You know? And women are brought up to believe loving a man is the most important thing. And for me, I will raise my daughters and my you know, as being you are love yourself first. Yeah. A man is a bonus. Yeah. Sometimes when I look at my students who come from our, you know, from our nation school system, sometimes I wonder what has been going on in school. So having said that, but what I do in my capacity is that because I teach ethics, so it kind of gives me some form of avenue to educate the young ones in regards to what their rights are. So I do. I mean, my job is to inspire as much as I think a teacher is supposed to inspire. I do look at myself as an educator, so I do those things in my small capacity. And as well as, you know, I think if every other individual at home, if you're able to instill a member of the family, if you're a parent, you're able to instill your, in your children, why is it important for sons to take responsibility? Why is it important to daughters to know what their rights are? I think we are studying in the family itself to begin with. And I think a lot of our issues today is the breakdown of family system itself that's giving us a lot of social issues out there. When she was growing up, I started talking to her about issues, just talking to her about my work. She was privy to everything that I did. When I was the bureau chief for Time Magazine for six and a half years in Kuala Lumpur, she kind of like, she was reading up on what I was writing. She knew what I was working on and everything. And then, then, of course, you needed to talk about sex. And I decided that I'm not going to talk about the birds and the bees because I didn't know how to do it, you know? So I was like, I'm just going to tell you exactly what you're getting into. She was 10, and I felt sad because I thought, my God, it's tampons and sanitary pads and childhood ended, but still, you know? So we spoke about it, and I told her the truth, the way it was. Just like I told her about life, the way it was. I told her about the real thing out there, the way it was. And today, um, we have these great conversations, and she knows her responsibility. 
she was told from the time she was 10 years old that yes you know you have sex and you'll get pregnant and this is what is going to happen to you so you know you need to be responsible before you can actually do it a lot of the objectification that happens um, in Malaysia which I don't feel it as a foreigner but according to a lot of the girls I've spoken to it happens every day everywhere they go it showed me what love meant and because of that I, I know that if a man were to ever hit me that is not love my father never loved me that way and if we can find a way to um, you know sort of talk about how love is so integral and so important in building you know a child's character and their stability and and their understanding of the whole concept of what feeling cared for is you know it doesn't mean you have to have two parents or two you know or or this kind of family or that kind of family or money or no money it's it's really love and so it's important to tell boys that oh girls can do the same thing girls can you know um, play football and girls can be better than you know, basketball and girls from very very young and that they have to respect girls and not only a mummy and that all girls and their girlfriends are the same and they have to grow up with this being planted in their heads and from parents um, so I understand that maybe in, in some family structure in this country it may not be done that maybe boys are you know, looked upon as better than girls. So it's very important these changes. It's important at school also that within school they you know start to treat girls and boys the same the same way from a young age, so that girls don't grow up feeling already not diminished but a bit lesser of anything than sure. the boys. And um, and it's important to talk about the same aspect of sexuality or anything with boys and with girls. If you had sons, you have to tell your sons, you know also what's happening, what's a period, and what, um, how to respect girls, and how to have girlfriends, and not only the girls. Right. And, and, and then the respect will come from both, and then hopefully later on, you know, the differences will lessen patiently. Uh, but if I can conclude uh, succinctly, um, the idea of, of freedom without fear really starts from all of us encouraging one person, uh, regardless of you know, uh, station or background, and then and then we can start. Of course, this whole point of bringing us together is to encourage debate. So we are all encouraged to fight it out and deck it out, which we, which has happened in every luncheon, and I love it. I love the energy. I love the fact that everybody has something different to say, and I'm always learning something new from this. So thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. A delightful timepiece, charming and superbly crafted. In the heart lies a precision automatic movement. Keeping time becomes poetry in motion. Celebrate magical moments with Bonia, the Italian inspiration. <laughs>